Hi everyone, thanks for watching this week's video. Okay, so this week we're making crusty Italian bread. Now I've got my dad here with me this week. Uh, my dad is a professional baker and he's going to be showing us step by step how to make this bread. Okay dad, so before we get started, um, do you just want to talk through the ingredients first? Yeah, essentially you only need four ingredients to make bread. You need flour, you need water, you need yeast and you need salt. If you don't have any of these ingredients, then any of these ingredients you don't have, then you can't make bread. You can add additional ingredients to bread, but these are the essential ones. Now Stephen's already spoken to you about the flour that you use for the focaccia recipe. Um, and there's some good information in that. I'm going to reiterate what Stephen said about that. Um, one of the things that's most important about bread making flour, bread making flour is different from cake making flour, for example. And the, the difference is the protein content. So you're saying, sorry, you're saying the higher the protein content, the better for, for this? Or? The higher the protein content, the better. And you can see that on the side of the packet of the bread that tells you exactly uh, how much protein is in it. And in this yeah. case, it's 14 grams. Now, when I was in Italy, uh, last year, uh, uh, for my summer holidays, uh, I picked up a couple of bags of, of Italian flour that uh, I was going to use when I come home here. And I've used some, but not for bread making. This is one here that is made for, for bread or for pasta. And I look at the, the protein content and it's only 11.1 grams uh, per kilo. And that's quite a low uh, uh, amount of... But for the type of bread that we like, which is light, sometimes in Italy the bread can be very heavy and, and people like it that way, heavy and solid, but um, we, we prefer our bread a wee bit lighter and therefore we, we use a high protein flour. It's the protein that creates the gluten. Right? There's no gluten in flour, but there's a mixture of proteins that come together when you make them wet and they form gluten. Now another interesting flour that I picked up in Italy last year as well, which I haven't opened yet, I haven't tried it, uh, and it's called, one, you'll not be able to read that because I'll be back to front, but <laughs> it says 100% Manitoba. Now, Manitoba is uh, a region in, in, in Canada, and I'm looking at the protein content of, the, content of this, and it's 15.5%, which is really high. Um, so I haven't tried that one yet, but it's quite interesting because that um, it's called Manitoba, it comes from Canada and also this particular flower, it says on the label that oh, Canadian wheat, you may well be able to see that, Canadian wheat, and that is the best wheat in the world for making bread, Canadian wheat. Because that, particular, so that particular flower, is it? it's quite an easy one to get a hold of in the supermarkets as well, so you should have no problems getting Well, this. here in the UK, you can certainly buy this in supermarkets. I should really cover that name because I'm not, <laughs> not allowed to advertise, but yeah. <laughs> there you are. Okay, we also need yeast. Now, I'm going to use fresh yeast today. It comes in a, in a block. This is kind of crumbled up, but you'll see what I do with that uh, shortly. You can use dried yeast. Dried yeast isn't as good as fresh yeast. Fresh yeast is better if you can get it. You can usually get it in supermarkets. It comes in, in small cubes that uh, you can buy, uh, but it, it doesn't keep all that well. If you get fresh wheat, fresh yeast, you can keep it for about a month if you keep it in a, in a fridge, in a meat container, a plastic container. So that's what I'm going to use today. Or you can freeze it, can you? You can freeze fresh yeast. You can freeze, freeze fresh yeast as long as you freeze it in small quantities. So a, a small piece like that, you could wrap in, in cling film or, or something and, uh, and freeze it. Big blocks you don't freeze, okay, because it takes too long and it can kill the yeast. Okay, well, the other ingredient, so the flour, I'm using, well, if you've seen the flour, I'm going to use salt, which is just ordinary table salt. Um, I'm also going to use um, some olive oil. And this is a nice Italian uh, extra virgin olive oil that I'm going to use in this. What does the olive oil do for it? The olive oil makes it bread richer, it makes it more moist, it makes it more uh, palatable and it gives it flavour as well. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So I think we'll just then we'll get started. Get started. Get started. Get started. Yeah. Okay, Dad. So what's the first stage? Well, the, this is a, stu- a two-stage process. In the first stage, um, in Italian, you would call it the biga. Now that means the flour, a small amount of yeast, and the water is, is added. And some of the water, not all of the water, is added, and that is mixed together and allowed to rest for. 17 to 24 hours in order for the fermentation to start. That has the effect of uh, getting the, the dough um, ready and mature more quickly. So I've got the flour here in a separate bowl. Um, I'm going to weigh the water. Um, you can measure water in a, in a jug, but I always weigh the water. So um, we need 90 grams of water. It's 170 grams of uh, flour already in, so 90 grams of water. There we go, 89, 90. Okay, and we set the, the, the scale. And I need one gram of yeast, fresh yeast. Um, you would have to estimate it if you were using dried yeast, because it would only be half a gram at this stage. Um, but anyway, one gram, and I think that would be about, about this much here. I'm going to plop this in to the water, yep, and that's it, one gram. Okay, so I'm just going to mix that together. And I'm going to add it to the flour, which we've got here. And mix this roughly together. Now this gives a very stiff dough. Very dry, very stiff, but if over, we'll, we'll leave this to rest for, as I say, 17 to 24 hours. So this is going to lie overnight. Um, and I'll just keep mixing it until it comes together and it's a very stiff dough. So that's this Biga ready. You'll see it's very rough, very dry, but that's fine. And we just put it in a bowl, cover it with cling film, and put that away to rest overnight. Okay, Dad, so what's next? Okay, well, this is the Biga starter that's been lying for 17 hours or thereabouts, um, and I'm going to mix in the rest of the ingredients with this. Uh, as we speak now. What I'll do is I'm just going to do it on a board. I'm going to put it, um, scrape it out of the board. Put it aside for a moment. I'll put the flour on the board first. How much flour is this stuff? It's uh, 170 grams, or sorry, no, 225 grams of flour. Um, I've got 170 grams of, of water, I've got five, an extra 5 grams of yeast, and I've got my olive oil and my salt, uh, the 8 grams of salt and 25 grams of olive oil. So I'll make this uh, space in the, in the flour, um, add the, the yeast into it, the water, I can just uh, mix this by hand for a, a minute or two first. I'll leave the salt till last. So the, the yeast get mixed in with the water. Just watch this if you're going to do it this way. You can also do this in a mixing machine, by the way. Uh, if you have got a, a mixer, you don't have to, to do it uh, all by hand. Mix that in, put, put in the, the biga or the starter and mix that in. It's a bit messy, a bit sloppy. Um, but if we just bring the, the water in from the inside uh, of, the, of the, the bay or the well or whatever you want to call it, then it will eventually all come together. And how long would you work this for? Uh, well, you would work this for at least 10 minutes. The longer the better, 15 minutes would be better. And you work it by hand. If you've got a mixing machine, also you would do it for about the same amount of time. What I would say is, if you are doing it in a mixing machine, 
be careful with the mixing machine because I see other people doing it and they're putting too much strain on the machine. Always use a dough hoop rather than a cake beater for uh, the, the appliance that you use. Um, but the best way to do it is by hand, just take your time and stretch it and tear it and stretch it and tear it until it becomes a nice smooth uh, homogenous uh, dough. At this stage um, I can filter add the salt and the uh, olive oil so I'll just get that mixed first so the water and the and the flour get properly uh, mixed together so that the gluten can form and it's the gluten that's the important thing for making the bread light. Salt first added that in and there's got a lot of mixing to come so that will be mixed in before we're much further on and next we're going to add the olive oil just mix it a wee bit more together first before I add the olive oil so what I'm doing is I'm pulling and stretching developing the gluten and it's the gluten that traps the uh, I, see, I see also in other videos that people talk about the air in the dough. There's no air in the dough. Um, there's carbon dioxide which is produced by the yeast. The yeast produces two things. It produces carbon dioxide and it produces alcohol. The carbon dioxide is a gas and the alcohol um, is driven off in the oven. So when you get a loaf of bread out of the oven, uh, it's got no alcohol in it. Which is probably a good thing for... For most people. So this is coming together as a dough, it's very sticky at the moment, but the more I do this the more it'll become cohesive and it'll stick to itself rather than everything else. I'm going to add the oil now, again this is uh, quite a lot of oil in this, gives it a lovely flavour and lovely texture inside. So I'll mix that for a few minutes and then I'll come back to let you see how it's getting on. Okay Dad, so you've been mixing the dough for a good 10 or 15 minutes now, um, so what do we do next? Okay, now it's ready just to put away to, uh, to ferment and to, to improve. So give it a wee roll up, nice and smooth, you'll see the difference in it uh, from what it was before. Nice and smooth, into a bowl. What I've done is I've just wiped the bowl with a, 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 a bit of olive oil on a tea cloth and I'll sit it in there like that and I'll take a wee bit of uh, a cling film and I'll cover that up and I'll leave it for 45 minutes and we'll come back and have a wee look at it in 45 minutes. Okay Dad, so uh, that's 45 minutes past, um, so what's next? Right, okay, well you'll see a wee difference in the and the dough uh, has risen quite a bit in that 45 minutes. What I'm going to do now is uh, dust the, the board with some flour and just allow that to pop out. It's coming out. There we go. It's full of carbon dioxide gas now at this stage, but I'm going to knock that back out again. Keep some of it in, but just to bring the the yeast back in contact with some fresh food in the in the dough and rejuvenate the dough. Um, you'll see that it's it's changed. Now what we'll do now is we'll put it back into the bowl again, cover it up, and leave it for about another uh, thirty minutes. Uh, and at that time, it should be ready to divide and uh, final give it a final moulding. Okay. Okay, so I've let this dough lie for another almost 45 minutes. You'll see that it's risen again to, to what it was before. A very light dusting of flour on the board. Uh, turn the bowl over. It should just drop out. There it goes. This time again, just very lightly knock it down again and just roll it up. We're going to put it back into the bowl 
and we're going to leave it for another oh, five or ten minutes and then we're going to divide it into two loaves and mould it. Okay, now we're on the last uh, stage here. Uh, we've let the dough lie in this bowl for about 10 minutes. I'm going to divide it into two uh, equal uh, parts. Sit them there like that for a wee minute. I'll just, I'll just double check the weight to make sure that the bowl, it doesn't matter if they're exactly the same weight, but if, the, if they are, that's, that helps. 310. That was the 140 almost, so that's. Try again. 346. And 326. Okay. Perfect. Good. Good. Now, I'll sit them there and. Just take it one at a time, just flatten it down without degassing it uh, completely. Just tuck it in from both sides and then just roll it. Tucking it in with your thumbs so that they've got a seam backwards and forwards a couple of times. Don't press too hard, keeps it nice and, and, uh, nice and smooth. Same with this one, tuck it in halfway and that way. Be very gentle with this, just making a, a seal. We'll get two like that. Now, what I've got to prove them, you may not have, is a wee wooden basket, uh, and that's, ex that's exactly what that's for. Now, you could use uh, a plastic container. Of that kind of shape, if you like, that, that one would have to be a wee bit bigger for this size of loaf. But uh, anything would do. Now, this cloth that I've got used to be a dish towel, but uh, I cut it in half just for this purpose. And what I do with this now is I drape this over the basket, press it down. A very light dusting of flour, it wouldn't really stick to it much. Take the loaf, and that's the way it's going to be presented. That's the bit with the seam, so that's the bottom. So that goes in, you can put it in uh, either way, but that goes in face down. And then we fold the cloth over, just very loosely on top. That's one done. The other one, exactly the same. Press the cloth down. light dust of flour, not too much, in there like that, cover it up and it's like putting them to bed to go to sleep. I'm going to just leave them like that, I'm going to cover them with another piece of cling film just to stop air getting in because if air gets in um, it tends to dry the surface of the dough so a wee bit of cling film over the top. Uh, although it's not 100% necessary and we'll leave them for approximately half an hour and then we'll look at it and see if they're ready for the oven. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, Dad, so what happens now? Right, okay, well the dough's been lying in these wee baskets for about 30 minutes. I'm just going to tip this one out very gently, sit it down on this uh, peel, if you've not got a peel then you need to find a, maybe a board or something. I'm slashing it along the top and I'm flipping it straight into the oven. One to a, a baking stone, but if you didn't have a baking stone you could uh, just put it onto the back of a, of a of an oven tray and that would do it for you. And just cut this down there and this allows the dough to expand in the oven and uh, we get the maximum rise from it. The last thing that I'm going to do is just have a spray of water. I'm just put that in. That, what that does, it just softens uh, the crust of the dough so that it, it can expand freely in the oven. And how long will this take to cook roughly? They'll take about uh, 30 minutes. 
um, in the oven all together. I'll have a wee look at them after about 25 minutes. Right. I'll take them out um, and I'll just make sure everything, I might turn them round because the oven isn't, this isn't a fan oven, it's just a, a normal oven, so it might have to, make me hot spots and cold spots, so what I'll do is I'll turn them round after about 20 minutes. And what minutes. temperature would you, would you recommend to, to cook this up? I'm looking at in centigrade about, say, 250. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's the bread ready, it's coming out of the oven now. I'll just sit it here on this cooling wire, I'll get the other one out. the other one and we'll let them sit on that wire for about five minutes just to cool down a wee bit and then we'll cut them and see what they look like inside okay Okay, so thanks everyone for watching this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope you've learned something too. Uh, I have. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Dad, for, oh, for this. It was my pleasure. I enjoyed doing it. Okay, and uh, one other thing I'd like to say as well is if you just hit that subscribe button, it means you'll not miss out on any future videos. And we we'll look forward to seeing you all again soon.